from Poland, Mr. Hassan or Dr. Soon to be Dr. Hassan Naki. Welcome to my channel. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Arham. Uh, yes, as I. Yard. <laughs> <laughs> What's cooking sapiens? Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Erham and I'm a fourth year medical student studying at the University of Oslo in Norway. Today I have with me a good friend of mine and a last year medical student from Poland, Mr. Hassan Nakib. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my channel. Thank you, Erham. Thank you so much. Uh, we have already made a video together previously yeah. about like medicine in Poland and Norwegian. Mm -hmm. uh, however, that video really got a good response and we have been getting a lot of emails from people who have seen that video and wanted to know more about about um, studying medicine or being about being a student in Poland. So I decided that we should make maybe a Q&A video about mm -hmm. this and uh, yeah, so here we are. So yeah, he's gonna be answering some of your questions and uh, we will try our best to help you out. Yeah. And since this is going to be a pretty long video and I really value your time as my viewers, mm -hmm. you'll find all the timestamps in the description box below so you guys can skip through and watch exactly the questions or parts that you want to watch. So now without any further ado, let's get to business. All right, so the first question is from Lazy Med Student mm -hmm. who asks, why Poland? I live here and I, all I want to do is move away. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a pretty good question. So why, why don't you try and answer that? Uh, uh, okay, I think most, uh, okay. Uh, it's pretty common that many Norwegian students or in general mm. students from Europe, uh, I think Poland is known to have a lot of Scandinavian students, especially yes. from Norway, Sweden and Denmark. Yeah. Um, been there for decades, mm. I would say, or at least a decade. Uh, I think the most, one of the most important factors is that the students want to save time. Mm. Uh, a lot, of course, a lot of students uh, are really close in getting uh, into medicine in, for example, uh, in Norway, let's mm. say Oslo, right? But let's mm. say they they only need like, let's say a half point, right? Mm. So they just want to save time. And yeah. yeah, and it's pretty easy when you come back from Poland, like after graduating, mm. right? So it's not that difficult when it comes to the procedures like uh, getting your diplomas, like to, to get them accepted and, yeah. you know, approved mm. and all that, because it's in Europe mm. and uh, we don't have to take any exams. Mm. So that's why, that's the reason that most Norwegian students choose Poland. Choose Poland. Yeah, uh, and as you already said, I think it's worth mentioning that the GPA requirements for studying medicine in Norway are insanely high, right? Yeah. So most people or most students who are not able to <clears throat> match or achieve that high GPA can have, they have two options. Firstly, they can either reset their exams mm -hmm. and try and improve their GPA and get into yeah. medicine in Norway, but that's gonna take maybe one year or six mm -hmm. months or two years, could take like a lot of time. Yeah. So as you said, most people then try and save time and just, you know, go to Poland or any other country any Eastern European countries to yeah, exactly. um, study medicine, medicine and then come back to Norway. Yeah. Alright, the next question is by Ibrahim Iqbal who mm -hmm. asks Are there many Norwegian students in Poland? Which means, are there uh, many Norwegian students studying in Poland? Uh, you would be surprised to know actually there are a lot of Norwegian students. Uh, there used to mm -hmm. be, uh, because I think in all universities in Poland, right, uh, we do have uh, a Polish division. Okay. which includes uh, just the Polish students, li like the native students. Yes. Okay. And then we have English division, which is mm. just for the uh, mm. international students, right? Okay. So many, uh, okay, in that international, uh, sorry, English division, mm -hmm. we used to have certain programs, different mm. programs. Okay. Let's say we had uh, one program, which is called European program. Mm. That includes students from Europe, okay. right? Also Norway, Denmark, Sweden, mm. Italy, Spain, okay. France, you know. And uh, in European program, uh, let's say, for example, if I take my year as an example, I mm. would say 80 to 90 percent students are Norwegians. Okay. All right. So we only, and the fun part is that we, we don't even feel like we are studying in Poland. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> only when mm. we're talking to, communicating with the patients or with mm. professors, like during the lectures and labs. That's when you feel that you are studying. studying in, in Other than that, you are yeah. only speaking Norwegian with them. You have, yeah, it's mm. pretty much uh, mm. really good. All right, yeah. cool. The next question is by Farma Sultan. She asked, the, she's asking about the financial part and the tuition and student loans when it comes to studying medicine in Poland. Yeah, it's pretty easy to get the student loan. Uh, <clears throat> all you need is, uh, in Norway, we have mm. something which is called general studio competence. Yes. You only mm. need that. Okay. Uh, if, let's say, if you didn't have uh, let's say biology, physics, and chemistry, like uh, the the uh, real fog uh, mm. that we have in Norway, right? Science subjects. Yeah, science yeah. subjects mm. that you you are required to have mm. in order to study medicine in Norway, right? Mm. Let's say if you don't have them, right? Mm. 
uh, you don't need to have them. You, you could just uh, do the entrance exam in Poland, which okay. includes the physics, bi uh, biology, and chemistry, and, and maths. Chemistry maths. Uh, and if you pass that, you can just easily get in, right? Get into so medicine. it's pretty, okay. pretty much that mm. simple. Uh, coming back to the question, the financial part tuition and student loan. Um, mm. The tuition fees is roughly around 10 to 11,000 uh, euros. Okay. Uh, per semester or per no, year? No, it's, it's per year. Per year. Per semester, it would be like 5,000 to 5,500, depending on which university you're studying in, right? Okay. So it's like almost the same everywhere mm. in Poland. Mm. Uh, so it it's like roughly around 100 to 120,000 Norwegian kroners. Okay. Depending on the you know mm. currency exchange rate and all that, mm. uh, <clears throat> and study uh, student loan you get from loan mm. Uh You get uh, you have to apply for the maximum loan, and it's okay. around uh, two hundred thousand each year, mm. Mm. and you get the loan per semester. Okay. So first mm. uh, first payment would be in uh, October or mm. even if you apply earlier, you can get that mm. after getting your admission right, mm. and the second payment would be in December. Okay. But is it like, is the sum or the amount that you get from the loan cost, is that enough to like, for your daily expenditures as a student in Poland? It's more than enough, I would say. Okay. But if you do want to enjoy other things, let's mm. say uh, uh, a holiday, right? Mm. Uh, a quick tour to, for example, England or other neighboring countries, right? Mm. In your semester break. So I would say that it's smart to have a summer job. Okay. So, mm. so you can come to back yeah. to Norway so in the summer and yeah, work. And so you don't stress school. a lot yeah. about like saving money and all that. Mm. So. All right. Next question is by Mohsen Sajid who asks, um, if I'm studying medicine in Poland and I'm not a European citizen, then what, what exactly are the rules and requirements for um, a residency in Norway? Uh, honestly, the question is a bit tricky. Okay. But as far as I know, mm. uh, the only requirement for uh, practicing as a physician in Norway is that you speak Norwegian, Norwegian fluently, yes. right? You know mm. that. Mm. Uh, I think if you're not, let's say if you don't hold a European citizenship, mm. so I think they would require you to present a, a kind of proof, proof that yeah. yeah you speak Norwegian at level yeah. C, I think. Mm, I think so. Yeah. But I think the guy who's asking, I think he's done his uh, high school uh, from Norway. And I don't think that should be a problem no. because then you have the Schnell Studi Kompetenz, which is yeah. like the official document. That should be get. enough, yeah. yeah. So I don't but, think there should be a problem. Yeah, but if a person is, let's say, if a person is uh, studying straight from a non-EU country, right, in Poland and wants to move back to Norway, mm. I think the most, uh, I think it would be great if the person contacts, uh, we have the, health. I don't know how to say it in English, but it's Health Direktorat. Like the health department, basically. Yeah, yeah. so I think... It's much smarter if you contact them directly and ask these sort of yeah. questions. Next up, we have two questions by Dili2 who asks, how hard or how difficult is medicine in Poland? And secondly, do you have physics and chemistry uh, over there? Hmm. Uh, honestly, I would say everybody would answer the same. That yeah. medical, the, the, mm. the medicine is generally the same all over the world. Mm. Mm. Uh, we, the, we the, the level of difficulty. The level medicine. of the difficulty is the yeah. same. We have the same books, same mm. syllabus, uh, so that's pretty much it. Other than that, mm. we do have uh, chemistry, general chemistry or mm. organic chemistry in the mm. first year, and we do have also a biophysics subject yeah. in Poland in the mm. first year. All right, the next question is by Wally Nozai 90 who asks, how hard or how difficult is the exam in Poland? And I think he's referring to the entrance exam um, for medicine in Poland. And since I have personally taken this exam, I think um, it's not really that hard, uh, if you study for it because mm. uh, you have to take the exam in three subjects and it's a multiple choice exam yeah. so I took my exam in um, chemistry biology and math and uh, the problem is that most of the stuff in like let's say biology uh, is not really taught in Norwegian high school for example mm -hmm. anatomy and you know physiology like all that stuff so you have to study for the exam separately to you know, really prepare and yeah. pass the exam so it's not really enough if you have completed your high school in Norway then I don't think it's really easy to pass the exam if you haven't really specifically studied for the exam uh, for the entrance exam and the syllabus and the curriculum for this exam you can find easily on the official website of the university you're applying to so I yeah. think it would be would make good sense it's to pretty use. much simple because they yeah. have all the information that you need in mm. order to apply like under the section admission mm. Every little detail is available, even the syllabus, like the points of each subject, mm. what you need in physics, what you need in chemistry, what you need in biology, what you need in maths. Yeah. Everything is available. Mm. Next up, we have two questions by Elon Ten Berisha, who asks, what are the top 
three best universities in Poland? And secondly, how are the exams and the tests in general built? Um, how did you study for them in Poland? Hmm. Uh, I personally don't know what are the top three best universities in Poland. Like, okay. I haven't checked the statistics, but I would say the most popular ones are the one in the capital, Warsaw. Mm -hmm. uh, Gdansk is pretty popular. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say, uh, you know, uh, the thing is, we have English division in all universities, all in universities. almost all universities in Poland, okay. like Krakow, Lublin, Warsaw, mm -hmm. uh, Katowice. Uh, Stechin. 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 <laughs> <laughs> they say Stechin, Bialystok. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of universities, and all of them are pretty much the same. So it okay. really doesn't matter where you're applying. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would say maybe you can apply to the most popular ones, where they, the it's pretty common for the Norwegian students to apply, like Warsaw, Krakow, Stechin, Bialystok, Lublin, uh, Gdansk, yeah. Poznan. These are the cities, and it's pretty much. Uh, it's really really easy to find all the information that you need you can just mm. uh, type mm. in on Google okay. like medical universities in Poland you mm. will get the list right mm -mm. all uh, and there's a link I can even send the link I, I can, okay, send I you can the link post and that you in the can, description box yeah. below yeah and there you they have the links that directs you straight to the university's website mm. to the admission section okay so it's mm. really easy for you mm. to get yeah. to know all, uh, all right to know all the information that mm. you need and what about the exams? How the exam? How, what is the exam structure in Poland or in, at your university? Uh, I would say ninety nine or the, the like. The majority of the exams are we have multiple choice questions. Multiple choice. Okay. We do have some oral exams, but not it's not that much that common. Uh, most of the questions are like multiple choice questions, mm. and uh, in big exams we have like hundred questions. The pa okay. the passing threshold is sixty percent. Mm. So you need like of course sixty. Uh, correct answers out of hundred. Okay. Uh, that's it. All right. Yeah. So and then he asked, "How did you study for your exams?" I think that's a pretty. You can talk hours and hours for the, on that topic. So if you want to know more about how to study or like yeah. effective study techniques, you can check out my videos on these topics. You'll find mm -hmm. the link somewhere over here. All right. Yeah. Next up, we have a few questions by um, Fatima Kadir. So I'll only be answering the ones that we already have not answered because a few of those um, we have already talked about. So firstly, she asks. What is this year's grade requirement and last year's? So, yeah, this year and last year's grade requirements for entrance into medical universities. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, I would suggest you to check the university's website, the admission section. There you, you would have all the information that you need. Uh, one thing that's for sure that you need at least 60% from your high school to mm -hmm. apply for the even the entrance exam, right? Mm -hmm. So just go to the specific university that you're applying to, go to the English division section admission, mm -hmm. and there you have all the information that you need. Mm -hmm. Everything they have explained thoroughly. Yeah. It's because I think this part really varies between universities, yes. so it's not really easy to give a, a, mm -hmm. give a con concrete answer um, to like uh, that applies to every single university. Also, they have different rules and regulations each year. Mm -hmm. So I would really suggest you to I can post a link in the description box yeah. below, alright? That's good. Alright, and next up she asks um, that her friend um, got a 6 in, G in, the, in Norwegian high school, like in her GPA, mm -hmm. but she still chose to study medicine in Poland. Do you not get accepted if in, in Oslo if you have a 6 in your GPA? Okay, so I think for this year, the GPA merit for getting into medicine in Norway, in Oslo at least, is around 6.2. Uh, for the for the uh, for the spring session and around six point I think four or six point three for the um uh, the <laughs> fall session. So if she had six in her GPA, I think I mean six is obviously less than six point two. So I I think maybe yeah that's a problem that she yeah. lacked a couple of points. Or secondly, if even if she had enough GPA, maybe she. Maybe that was her personal preference yeah, to, to study medicine in Poland. Mm. Um, I don't know. So yeah, I mean, uh, the GPA requirements or the, the the GPA merit for the for last year and for this year, I think, is around six point two for the spring session. Mm. And then she asks, I feel like if I study in Poland, I'd get homesick for six years. What do you think? <laughs> hmm. Uh, yes. Uh, honestly, it's not uh, that easy to study like abroad abroad mm. uh, without your family and friends and close ones, but you do have a lot of uh, opportunities uh, mm. to come back home. Like for example, in summer vacation, the 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 best thing in, in Poland is that you do have a lot of breaks. First break you have, you, you would have Christmas break in December. Mm. That's 
that's pretty much like 10 days or mm. even a week and the one uh, uh, also you do have at least in my university uh, we can plan our breaks like we can have longer breaks if we talk to our professors mm. and let's say we can uh, make up those labs or classes yeah. in weekend let's say to have a longer break right mm. so you do get like extra two or three days but yeah you have uh, christmas break you have semester break in the end of january that's like two to three weeks mm. uh, then you have spring break like poske in norway and then you have the summer holidays so if mm. you pass all the exams in summer you don't have any retakes mm. you have summer vacation from june until september so it's like three whole months Mm. So it's like 90 days that's a lot of break and mm. yeah i think in the beginning it it's pretty common it's hard yeah and it's pretty normal to uh, feel depressed and miss home mm. but yeah. you you would get used to it trust me mm. it's it's not that bad.